social media companies are kind of, they all get along for the most part, Frank. I mean, they all kind of get together and, you know, censor people and block things and, and control and use data and manipulate and all that kind of stuff. But it just goes to show that not everybody gets along and everybody is out for themselves. And that's a good thing in the big picture. So you're right. Apple is pressing. You can tell they're tightening in the reins, right, Frank? Because they know how much power they have, and everybody is warning against it. Now, the separation you talked to earlier is interesting because you have Twitter coming out and saying, hey, over 80% of our advertising is brand-related, so we're not really that impacted by the Apple uh, tracking services. But still down today. Uh, Facebook warned about it, and he's Zuckerberg. So now I'm adding another company to my I don't like, but they're great stock companies. So Twitter... I do like Twitter because I search it for investment dif differences and humor because uh, there's a lot of good people. Uh, Cuppy, the, a guest to hear. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of his name. Capitalist Exploits guy. Uh, he's a good guest Macintosh, on here. Macintosh, Macintosh, Macintosh is, is great. Here. So follow those guys on Twitter. So yeah. I love the service in that sense. Uh, but just, just the behind the scenes. I mean, Twitter just reported earnings. And what was it? $700 million was a one-time charge hmm. because they settled for misleading earlier investors about user growth and slowdowns and uptake. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. of course, nobody admits anything wrong. Nobody does anything bad, Frank. So how about next time I screw up here at Curzio Research? <laughs> I don't admit I'm wrong. And you give me a pay raise or something, okay? <laughs> how about that? That's basically what it is. It, <laughs> it's so weird the way the legal system is. And in our, in our, in our industry, you just got to disclose it. You can disclose that you're robbing somebody and... It, they can't do anything to you, really. You could say, and I don't mean like saying robbing, but you could say, hey, you know, we're getting paid for, and we see this in newsletter industry from some companies where, where we're getting paid and they write out the number. They don't put the number in because it's easy to see the actual number. They write it out. And if they'll write out $330,000 and we're getting shares of this and we could dump it whenever we want. We may not own this position by the time you're reading this. Like it says all that in these disclaimers, basically saying, look, Absolutely. we're pumping this to you and we're dumping this shit right in your face. <laughs> right? As long as you disclose it, you will not get in trouble. Right. So and, yep. and who the hell reads a disclaimer these days? Believe me, if you read a disclaimer, if you read a disclaimer, you would not be on the Internet. You would not be on the internet if you read this claim. Nobody reads them. Because whenever they say, hey, we update our private policies, what that means is buried in the 30-page report when you click it, which no one ever clicks. And if you don't click OK or if you click off of it, that means you accepted it, right? So when you accept it, buried in a couple – is that we're going to be sending all this out to third parties. and more. It's just yeah, – they're tweaking, but they have to update it and send it to you, right? They're required by law to send you any updates of the private policy. But what do they do? They bury it, and then some of them actually have the thing where – yeah, before you close it, it says check mark to make sure you read it, right? And then you click it. But if you actually read some of these things, holy shit. And, and what they track, what they follow, the cookies on, the, on your – just it's unbelievable the tracking services that they have. And, you know, again, there is going to be a big crackdown. People are pissed about it. But at the end of the day, they, they're pissed. But, Daniel, they don't want to do anything about it. Yeah, you know, they want to be on Facebook telling everyone their lives. Even when I go to a concert or something, I see all these young kids. They literally go to this concert – I don't even think they go to the concert to watch the concert. They go there and they're on their phone the whole time. They're taping everything live, this and that, posting to Instagram saying, hey, I'm here right now. Look at me. That's why they're there to show yeah. everyone that, hey, this is what I'm doing right now and I'm having fun. I'm it's not even like, hey, you know, you have a good concert. Just put your phone down and watch it. You know, you can take pictures or whatever, but it's almost like more about I need to show everyone that, that I'm special, <laughs> that I'm, I'm here, I need the attention. I mean, you know, that's what social media brought out in so many people, and, and it's crazy. Just see, it, it, it's crazy what's going on social media. Well, that's what you're talking about with the Facebook papers. Have you read any of this about no, the Facebook papers yet, no. and the whistleblower and stuff? No. Uh, a little bit with the whistleblower, yeah, a little bit. So. Yeah. So, and that's why they're doing the big, uh, rumor is they're going to do a big branding, a uh, re-imaging on the branding side, maybe even change the name of Facebook. We hit into on that um, last week, but... The big takeaway here for me is that I'm interested to see Apple's earnings. I don't even know the date, but it's got to be coming up. But uh, I, I'm going to throw Twitter into the same category as Facebook here. I would buy this on this pullback. Um, I like what they're doing as far as uh, getting into the payment side with the cryptos. And you're going to be able to like tip pick people in Bitcoin, Jack Dorsey. He, you need to get him on the podcast. This is one of the most baffling, confusing people to me there is. And I say that out of respect because... He's at the Bitcoin conference in Miami earlier this year, Frank, and I think we talked about this for a moment, but they had a, a fan disrupt and yell about how he was banning people on Twitter, mm -hmm. and he handled it so well. I think the guy's grooming for political office run because he handled mm -hmm. it really well. But here you have a guy that is pro-Bitcoin, pro-freedom, and then his 
company, Twitter, <laughs> censors people on purpose. Yeah. Like, I don't know how that guy straddles that line, but I have to respect it a little bit. And the yeah. fact that he is so one way and the other, and he's willing to sit down and talk about it. So I got to give him that. Uh, getting into the payment side is great. They're warning that the Apple thing isn't that big of a deal for them. So again, to your point on this separation thing, um, I would still buy Facebook on the back, uh, on this pullback as well. I've, I've been on that boat for a long time. Um, can we take a quick rabbit trail to the metaverse? Yeah, I mean, that that's where Facebook's going, right? Metaverse, yep. everything, and, you know, it, it, it's exciting. It really is. I mean, I've been doing a ton of research, so much so where I took out, uh, you know, um, GoDaddy URLs and stuff like that, different businesses that I want to create within that metaverse. Uh, I mean, I'm very excited about it. I think it's for real. And, and the next two years, you're really going to see this thing. Uh, you know, Facebook, a, a lot of companies are putting a lot of money into it. Not just Facebook, Coca-Cola, a lot of companies are. Well, Zuckerberg's not going to be outdone by the other tech, Twitter, Apple giants. So on the conference call just a couple days ago, he was talking about building this metaverse out and its extension of the internet. And you, you've you quoted many times about how he said, hey, in the future, people will recognize us as a metaverse company versus just a social media company. This is on the conference call a couple days ago, Frank. This is Zuckerberg speaking. He says, if you're in the metaverse every day, you'll need digital clothes. You'll need digital tools, different experiences. Our goal is to help the metaverse reach a billion people and hundreds of billions of dollars of digital commerce a day. Frank, I am a simple-minded young analyst. Help me break that down and understand the impact of that. Even if you're 50% wrong. Mm -hmm. And what's the, is it a far jump to get people to go from social media every day? What, they got just under 3 billion users or mm -hmm. sign up ease. Mm -hmm. Is it that hard to get a third of those over the next decade onto a different platform or at least try it? You're starting to see more advertisements around Oculus Rift, virtual reality, augmented reality, that mm -hmm. coming to get, I mean, that is coming. And the big takeaway here, people, and then I'll get off the soapbox, Frank, is uh, I am going to be a little, I don't want to come across as arrogant, but I know it's going to come across that way. That's not my heart. But you have to be able to separate your personal beliefs or feelings on a company like me with Facebook. I'm not a big fan of the general picture. I think they do a lot of shady stuff, but it's a no-brainer on the investment side. People love social media. They love posting everything about their lives. And some of that's good. Like anything, you need moderation. It can be terrible. It's going to be used against you, blah, 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 blah. But don't just write it off because maybe you're not interested. Am, am I interested in plugging into the Matrix or this new metaverse? Mm, not really. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to totally ignore what could possibly come out and be built out and the opportunities that that gives investors. Are, are you on social media platforms? I have a Facebook page, yeah. Okay. I get on about once a year to thank everybody that wishes me happy birthday. <laughs> so not really, right? Not no, really. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So almost everyone who's on social media, they will eventually be on on the metaverse. So it's, I mean, well, at least try it out because it's going to be like an experience. They, it's not even try it. They're almost going to. It's not like you're removing them from the platform and going onto another platform. But if you look at why so many people, especially young generation, are on Twitter, it's like you know, here, look at me, type thing, right? Here, you know, I'm here. Uh, I think Facebook is cool. You know, you have Facebook groups. It, it's used for for a lot of good. But a lot of people are in there just to, to post and say, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Look at me and my family all the time and, and, and how great things are. Uh, the metaverse allows you to be anyone you want to be uh, and go anywhere you want to go in the world. Uh, it's going to allow you to, go, to create your own world. Uh, a good example is, you know, like colleges. Like, you know, maybe... I mean, it wouldn't be Ivy League because they get whatever they want, but maybe say, you know, Florida University. Now now they have, uh, you know, they're in the metaverse where you could attend it through, you know, you you have your profile. You can look at whatever you want. You're going to have the name and everything. It's going to be you. But again, you could make yourself look at whatever you want. Uh, you could go to college. You sit in classes with other people. You could interact with them, again, all virtually. So it's, it's virtual and augmented reality together. If you're going to watch the World Series, you could go there, sit there, watch the World Series as if you're at the game and interact. I... I it's so hard to explain. I'm not doing it justice. But when you see that you could buy NFTs, you go into worlds where they sell it. You go into an art store and they have NFTs in it, real NFTs that you could buy, right? So and you could use different tokens uh, uh, to buy them or different currencies. You could buy Coca Cola products. So I mean, you have so many companies that are going into this right now. That 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 you know, and Facebook. When it comes to Zuckerberg, when it comes to Dorsey, I would tell you this: and put your personal feelings aside and politics aside. Those are two guys that don't lose. They don't lose, okay? They love adversity. They love when people doubt them. Just like when they doubted, uh, you know, people doubt Rob Barron. Remember when he was buying Tesla and he was buying Tesla? His average cost basis on Tesla is $42. 
Forty-two dollars, right? That's that split guy. adjusted forty-two dollars seven years ago. And I remember just what was it, two thousand eighteen, when when Elon Musk said, "Hey, hey, you know, I'm going to take the company private and Twitter and stuff like that," and got a lot of trouble. And then the stock started coming down, and Barron was one of the biggest owners of it. And I remember them ripping him on CNBC, tearing him apart. You know, you own this, but what are you going to do? You're going to look to sell it. You got to look to sell it. And he's like, "I believe in Elon Musk, this company." And I think his forecast was. For a thousand dollars a share, like the split adjusted thousand dollars a share, I think to happen in two years ago, and I think it was fifteen hundred a share in twenty twenty four, which you know we're pushing eleven hundred dollars a share. Uh, but this is a guy that made six billion dollars personally, fifty four billion for his clients, <laughs> and you could say whatever you want about him, and that's what I like about him because he's like, nope, this is what I believe, this is why I see, you know, he sees everything different. Zuckerberg buying Instagram, he they wanted his head on a platter when two billion, two and a half billion dollars you're spending on this has no revenue. What do you think? If they didn't have Instagram, Facebook would be that's their growth model. It's not Facebook, it's Instagram. Instagram is their growth model. If they didn't have Instagram, that stock price would be cut in half of where it is today. Probably more, right? So and then you have Dorsey where he's running two companies and Square, you gotta step down from Square or Twitter. How many times did he deal with that with Twitter? I remember it was like 14, 15, 16 dollars. Uh, same with Square. You got to step down. You can't do both. These guys love that. And you just, there's guys you don't bet against. Those guys you don't bet against. I Politics aside, those are guys that you just don't bet against. So I would bet, be buying Twitter here. I'd be buying Facebook here. I, I think, you know, these stocks go a lot higher, but there's just certain people that you could bet against, certain people that you don't. These two guys, I, and Rob Barron, these just guys that, and, and Reed Hastings. <laughs> I love it. guy. You, you got to go back and look at his story because I know when he sat in a room and this was 2000 um, and he was hoping that Blockbuster would buy their company because, you know, after two, I think it's 2003. So the market just crashed and everything and they have a load of debt and Blockbuster was kind of laughing at them. And ever since that day, that lit a fire under that guy, that competitive spirit where he's like, I'm destroying everybody, destroy Blockbuster. And that's why I love when Disney got into this and he goes on. T- I love when he's on the conference call saying, no, it's good that other people are entering the business. Love that. That's what he said. What he meant is good because I'm going to show you, Disney, that you have absolutely no clue and you, there's no way you'll ever, ever be able to compete with us. And we're seeing that right now, right? You've seen those numbers go down. Disney's like, holy shit, we did the wrong thing. It's going to cost too much money to go on streaming. We can't put our best content on there because we make the most money over from Marvel through the movies and billions of dollars. And we're going to get 25% of that revenue if we just throw that onto streaming. And streaming is about new content. You know, just, just guys you bet, bet against and, you know, hey. I'll short this stock. And there's other guys like Elon Musk and things like you just you can't bet against them. And last thing here, Daniel, I'm gonna say with Elon Musk, tons of people have made money on this run through a thousand. I'm talking about people who just bought it option market. I mean, it's incredible. I think it counted for the calls accounted for something like 45% of the, all the option activity. Uh these people that make money in Tesla made a fortune all the way up. They are loyal forever. Their lives have been changed. They're gonna buy every single Tesla car out there. They're gonna buy two or three of them. They're not going anywhere. And there's something to be said for that. Not making sense of the valuation, which is incredible, but the loyalty and that brand, the brand, the loyalty of a brand, of a good, powerful brand, uh, he has followers that would never, ever leave him, uh, and it's something to be said for that. There's just something to be said for that where you know, another person that you just you don't bet against. Yeah, I mean, uh, results, it's very difficult to uh, ignore and argue with results, and all three of those guys, have you, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, they have they have a lot of soldiers backing them and uh, willing to go to war with them and invest mm-hmm. with them, and it's good. So, hey, I like success stories. I've missed out on uh, the Elon Musk. I've shared my personal feelings. There's a lot of drama there, but hey, um, he's – well, what did we just hear on the TV before we started taping? Uh, something like he's made – Musk has made more money on paper this year than Buffett made in like 90 years or something. Yeah, something like that. I, it was some wild stuff. It goes stat. to show you different investment styles work and just stuff incredible. like that. Just incredible. Yeah, it's it, it is incredible what, what, what he's done. It's good stuff. Yeah, you just – and remember, when you have Zuckerberg and you have Jack Dorsey, you have to really – you just said it. These guys have some of the smartest engineers, the smartest people in the world that they could pay – the programming, ideas. I mean, that's these tech companies. When you have these tens, twenties, hundreds of billions, and in Apple's case, $200 billion in your freaking balance sheet, you hire the greatest talent and you lock them in. And when you lock these people in, it's not Zuckerberg coming up, but he's the, the man, scientist, genius and stuff. He, he's the leader. But the people he has surrounded him, same with, same with Dorsey, uh, it's incredible. These are the smartest people in the whole entire industry and having them being able to help you out and talk about the metaverse, talk about Instagram and say why Instagram is a new, amazing platform that you have to, that you have to purchase and why 
you know, there's something to be said for that as well. So it's not just these guys where, you know, how competitive they are, but they, they surround themselves with the smartest people and they can afford to pay them double, triple what the market worth is because they have so much money in cash on their balance sheets and it's worth it because it's hard to lock in great, great talent that's going to be there long term, right? That's how you run a business. If you got talent coming in and out, I've been to a business where they kind of use it as stepping stone. Whenever someone got famous through that platform, they left. Started their own company, or they went someplace else, and that doesn't do anything for you. You you have to you know, retain that great talent. It's very easy to do when you have so much money on your balance sheet. When you could pay these guys a lot of money and pay them incentives, especially in your stock prices, which keep going higher and higher.